Yes, we're all logged in. Okay, great. So the next place that we're going to focus on is develop. So develop is its own, um, it's, you can think of that as the teacher or the curriculum writers portal in Atlas. It's where you'll go to access the courses you are assigned to. So it's important to note here that by default, all users in Atlas can view all of the curriculum. We believe in transparency when it comes to curriculum. When we, are, when we know what is going on the grade above and below us, we are more informed in our planning. So everyone can view everything, but only those who are actually assigned to a course can make changes to it. So I'll show you how to develop your unit calendar. Um, the takeaways, how to find your courses, how to create a unit, change the color of the unit bar, change the pacing of units, delete, restore, and rename units. So I'm just navigating back to your Atlas site. And again, I mentioned the tabs at the top here are the navigational tabs. That's how we'll move from one page to the next. When we hover over develop, we see the courses we are assigned to. That means that we can make changes to them. So I am assigned to a sample English 8 course. You might see a list of other courses that you are assigned to, which means you can make changes to. So I've already gotten a little bit of a head start. I've already started adding some units to my calendar. So when you click on a course from develop, you're brought to the unit calendar view. You can see um, this is set up by the academic weeks throughout the year. When you hover over the week numbers, it shows you the exact date ranges. You'll also notice things like December only has two weeks. That's because you can actually remove from this calendar uh, anything like the winter or spring breaks so that you don't have to leave gaps in your planning. A system admin at your school can adjust the start and end dates of the year uh, and also update those holidays and breaks. So we're looking at the unit calendar view. I already have some units of instruction here listed, and I can add more units to my calendar by typing in this unit name text field where it says create a new unit. So I'm going to write a unit on persuasive writing strategies, and we're going to teach it at the end of the year. So from week 34 to week 38. So I'm setting the weeks from and to with this drop down menu here. You'll also notice that you have the option to color code the bar. So instead of this default maroon or reddish color, maybe I wanna make this a blue color. I can click that and then click save. And now we'll see the unit that I just created in the calendar in the weeks that I've set and also the color that I determined up above. Uh, a lot of people like to use this color coding option for things like uh, writing interdisciplinary units. So again, you create a new unit by typing in the unit name, setting the weeks that you teach that unit from week one to week six, for example. You have the option to color code, and when you click save, the unit populates in, into the bar here, or into the calendar here. You'll notice that I have already some existing units. So once you have units in the calendar, you can change the order and the pacing of those units in the calendar by using the drag and drop features of Atlas. So when I hover over this unit duration bar here, you'll notice the shape of my mouse has actually changed to that um, cross shape. So that means now when it's in that shape, if I click and hold that click down, I can actually drag and drop and move this unit wherever I need to in the calendar. And when I hover my bar, uh, excuse me, my unit or my arrow at the end of that unit bar, again, the mouse shape changes uh, to the horizontal arrow. So that's letting me know now if I click and hold down the click, I can drag and extend the bar however long I need to or shorten it. So if we originally planned six weeks, but it actually took our kids nine, I can uh, accurately reflect that in the calendar by just dragging and dropping to make those changes live. Again, so you can move units wherever you need to in the calendar, and you can change the pacing of those units as well by using the drag and drop features. The last thing I wanted to show you here is that you can delete units from the calendar. So I already have all these units, but if I don't actually need this review, you'll notice each of the units has this little arrow button here. This is a universal symbol in Atlas, letting you know there's an actions menu that you can open up. So when I click on the arrow for this review unit, I can see that I can edit the unit attributes. So if I needed to rename the unit, I could. I can even change the pacing and the color from here as well. So that's the arrow button, 
edit unit attributes. I can also delete the unit. So when I click on that arrow button and click delete, it'll ask me if I'm sure. I'll click yes, and that unit goes away from my calendar. If you've deleted the wrong unit, or you've decided the next year that you actually do want to teach that unit and you do need it in your calendar, um, don't worry, nothing is ever permanently or fully deleted here. So in the unit calendar, um, for every single course, there you will see a recycle bin. So each course in Atlas has its own recycle bin at the top right of the calendar. And when you click on it, you will see all of the units that you deleted. And you can restore them back to the calendar by clicking the restore button. So I'm clicking on the recycle bin, clicking on the restore button, and the unit is back into the calendar where it most recently was before I deleted it. All right, I wanna do a quick check in here with you all. Um, I want to give you some time to try this, play with the calendar, adding units, um, changing the order and pacing of units on the calendar, deleting and restoring, playing with the colors. Um, let's take maybe two minutes here. Um, I want to be mindful of your time, but also give you a chance to gather questions. So let's take two minutes. Let me know if any questions come up and then we'll move forward to the next thing. Okay, thanks. And you can, you can grab it. I don't, I don't know how to use one of the Yeah, we, I mean, when we start next year, we'll have it just a week off. Spring break. I need All right, I hate to interrupt, um, but I wanted to check in here to see if there were any questions on the unit calendar that came up that I can answer before we move on. I don't think so. I think uh, the few questions that some people had, others were able to help with. Are they the only okay. color options someone's asking? <laughs> yeah, those nine are the only color options as of right now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, it used to only be one color, that single uh, maroon red color. Uh, so hopefully the, the additional ones are at least a bit of an improvement. Um, I just wanted to share with you just really quickly a screenshot of a report you can run in Atlas called the Comparative Unit Calendar, which allows you to put multiple courses together on the same calendar so you can view the pacing for example, a um, all of the course subject areas for a grade level. So right now we're looking at English, Math, Social Studies, and Science for grade six. So we can see the pacing and order, sequencing of units for our grade six students, what they're getting throughout the year. Um, some best practice recommendations, you'll notice things like um, for the science courses, they're titled, um, the units are titled unit one, unit two. It's a little bit hard for us to know what's going on in that science course. So um, when you have um, specific unit titles, it helps not only yourself, but your colleagues have an idea of what you're teaching in that particular time in the year. All right, into the unit planner. <clears throat> So we're gonna show you how to, um, we'll, we'll show you the functions of the categories in your unit planner template, how to enter information into each of those, how to target standards, add attachments, and create assessments in the unit planner view. So back to the unit calendar, again, we're in develop, we've selected a course, 
we're in the unit calendar, and now after we've created our units, we can actually uh, click on the unit title to get to the unit planner. So I'm going to click on persuasive writing strategies, and it'll take me to this unit planner view for this persuasive writing strategies unit in sample English 8. And we start with stage one at the very top where we can um, start with standards. So just so you know, standards is it's a, a unique category in things like enduring understandings, essential questions, concepts and skills. These are free text categories. I'll show you how to use those in just a moment. We're gonna start with standards. So you'll actually click on this button here that says choose standards. Oh, and Michael is editing that one, so I'm going to jump into a different unit really quickly. Michael, you can go ahead and stay there. I will jump into a different unit. Um, just so you all know, uh, Michael and I can be editing the same unit at the same time together, but it's on a by-category basis. So while Michael was in uh, standards, I could be in enduring understandings, just so you know. Um, okay, but we'll click on the Choose Standards button, and a separate window will open up, and it'll look like this. What we need to do is start by choosing a subject area. So underneath this browse standards header, the first menu says choose a subject. When you click on that menu, you'll see the Common Core, NCTM, and NGFS standards. If you use standards and you want to add them in your units, go ahead and select the subject area that makes the most sense for the course you're working on. A second menu will open. So based on the subject area you've selected, now you'll pick a grade level. And then you'll have a third and final menu uh, that lists the uh, unique strands for that subject area and grade level. So you can narrow it down even further if you wanted to. So now I'm going to select the writing standards that I want for this unit. And I can go back to the uh, strands and select the uh, language standards that I want for this unit. And maybe we have one speaking and listening standard as well. So you'll notice as I am at, I'm adding my standards to the unit by checking off the box. So each standard has its own unique box here. We check it off. And as we're doing that, Atlas is keeping track for us in real time, uh, how many times we've targeted a standard in this course and how many times we've assessed. So that will keep updating for you as you develop and cr uh, create your curriculum. Once you've selected the standards you want, you'll click the Save button here at the bottom right-hand corner, and all of those standards that I've selected will now populate here in the Standards section. I can delete standards from this unit by clicking the X if I need to, and I can always add them back by clicking again on Choose Standards. I know I'm moving a little bit quickly here, but I just wanted to be mindful of time again. Um, the Enduring Understanding, Essential Questions, Content and Skills, these are free text categories. So um, when I click my mouse, you can't see me, but I'm actually clicking my mouse once and it opens up the box that I've clicked into. So right now I have Enduring Understandings opening, opened up for editing. And once I've either typed or copied and pasted my information here, I'll move on to Essential Questions. And now Essential Questions is open for editing and you'll notice Enduring Understandings is, uh, for lack of a better word, closed. Uh, so now I'm opening up content, now I'll open up Skills. As I'm moving from one box to the next, Atlas is automatically saving my work for me. So you don't have to click save after every single section. When you move into the next category, Atlas will automatically save the work behind you. Scrolling down to stage two, assessment evidence, we can add assessments to our units by clicking on this button here, add new assessments. And this category works similarly to the standards category. When we click on add new assessments, a separate window or menu opens up. I can start now by giving my assessment a name, selecting a method. So this is a pre-populated list of um, assessment methods. This is how you'll use, you'll use this to um, create reports in Atlas, um, but we'll select the most um, appropriate option from this list. You can customize and refine this list, so please keep that in mind. And then I can select the type, whether it's a formative or summative assessment, Again, you can customize this list as well. I'll give my assessment a description, so I I'll, I'll, can write down some details, instructions for myself, for my students, just a general description of the assessment. And at the bottom here, the Add an Attachment feature. This is how I can bundle together any resources specific to this assessment I'm creating. So for my thesis statement assessment, if I have a rubric or an answer key or example of student work, 
I can attach it here so that it's all grouped together and saved within this thesis statement assessment I'm creating. You'll notice too that you have the option to um, attach documents from your Google Drive account. This is a live integration, so when you update those docs in, in Google Drive, if you've attached them in Atlas, they are a live link, so they will also be updated there as well. Finally, on the right here, we see the standards that we targeted up above. So all of my writing, speaking, and listening, and language standards that I checked off are available here for me to say, yes, with this thesis statement assessment, I am assessing these standards um, in the unit. So I'm identifying that by checking off the box next to them. And over here on the right, Atlas in real time, again, keeping track for me how many times I'm assessing a standard in the unit and how many times in the course. When I'm done documenting all my assessment information, I'll click save in the bottom right-hand corner and Atlas will populate with my assessment. I can add additional assessments. I can edit existing assessments and you'll notice too that you can delete. There's no recycle bin for the delete or for the assessment. So if you do delete an assessment, if you want it back, the best way to do that will just be clicking on add new assessment again. The last two categories here in stage three learning plan are the learning activities and resources. Again, free text categories that you'll click your mouse into to be able to type or copy and paste. All right, um, I don't know if you are following along with me or practicing on your own. I wanna give you two minutes here, just two minutes to practice um, in the unit planner. And let me know if any questions come up before we move on to the next thing. Okay, thanks. So, so the question is when you said that multiple people could edit a unit, it's only people that have permission or that are that are signed that course, correct? Oh, uh, great question. Yes. So in my sample English eight, both Mike and I are assigned to the course. So we are the only two people who can edit it and we can both be in the same unit together at the same time, just in different categories. So for you it would be the third the three the third grade team, you would all be able to edit it. Yeah. Yeah, and if you hover over collaboration, you can see everyone who's assigned to it. They're all going to relay it on Friday. Yeah. So, great question. So, uh, someone's asking about loading the standards. So, some of them are already in, and uh, the diocese is, is working with their legal to get, uh, and Aruba kind of get the diocesan standards up there. So, they'll also be on there. So, you can pick and search from the diocesan standards eventually as well. Yeah. Or do you yeah. need art standards? We can just add, ask. We can add whatever you would prefer in there. Yeah. National art yeah, national art standards. That's something I can talk about with you, but we can hopefully add that as well. Yeah, we have the national core art standards, so we can add that. And our standards team is working with um, uh, someone on your end to get the diocesan standards in as well. Yeah, I know diocesan legal is on, and it would be the same thing for language. So, uh, yeah, there's not all of the standards are in yet, but they will all be. Uh, over the next coming weeks, hopefully with the diocesan awesome. uh, permission. Yeah. Is there any other questions so far? Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so this is how you develop uh, course uh, unit calendars and how you add information within the units. If you are writing a unit and you ever wanted to print for, um, you like having hard copies, at the top right of your screen, you'll see the actions menu, and you'll see there's a lot of different actions that you can do here, but one of those is actually print. Uh, a lot of people like to have a hard physical copy in front of them, so you can print from here. Um, so again, everything we've been doing so far has been a develop. If you want to view the rest of your school's curriculum, so I mentioned in the beginning, everyone can view everything. If you wanted to see your um, school's uh, curriculum, if you hover over browse and select the unit calendars option, it will, excuse me, give you a full list of all, all of the courses so far in your Atlas system. So I could flip through all of these pages if I wanted to. The uh, courses are listed alphabetically by the course title, but you can also use these filtering tools here on the left to narrow down your results. So I'm a grade eight teacher. Maybe I just wanna see all of our grade eight curriculum. So I'll select grade eight from the filters and click browse. And now Atlas will show me all of our grade eight courses. Or maybe I'm only interested in seeing the English language arts curriculum at the middle school. 
So I'll select those two filters over there and click browse. And now I'm only seeing the English language arts middle school curriculum. Um, uh, the more filters you apply, the fewer results you're going to get. You do not need to select an option from each of these menus. In fact, I discourage you from that. Start small, start by looking at one, either the grade level or subject area, and then narrow down from there. You also can type a course name or type a teacher name to find courses that way as well. To view a course, um, you have this little nifty hide empty courses box here. So if you don't wanna see any courses that haven't yet had uh, information added to them, you can hide them there. Um, but to view a course, you'll click on the course title. So when we click on the course title, for example, Social Studies 3, it brings us to the unit calendar view first. You can always toggle between the course description, unit calendar, and curriculum map views if you want to. Um, so those tabs are available to you there that you can just cycle between the different views. And you can view individual units. So when I click on the unit title, I can see the planner view. I can't change anything. I am not one of the collaborators assigned to this course. So I'm only viewing the information here. And again, that is browse. So if you ever want to look at a grade level or department or an individual course at your school, hover over browse to view those lists of options. So browse is where you'll go to view your internal St. Rita um, curriculum, but you can view curriculum examples from outside of your school by going to the communities tab in Atlas. So there are two ways you can do that. One is through exemplars and one is through the public sites page. So you can explore both of those on your own. Um, I won't spend too much time here, but um, communities exemplars and communities public sites will both give you uh, examples or options to view other curriculum from other Atlas schools and districts. Again, that's communities, exemplars, and public sites. Please feel free to explore there um, and, and use those resources. They're available to you through the communities tab. Another great resource that's available to you is this support tab. So if you just click on the word support, or if you hover over support and select one of these options, um, clicking on support brings you to the Welcome to Atlas support page. So for each major function of Atlas, whether you're getting started or you're developing curriculum, or if you're ready to view and analyze, each major function has uh, these little subtopics here, and there are very distinct um, step-by-step -step instructions and um, screenshot guides that show you how to do those particular functions. And there are applications that you can expand on each page. So if you have questions or need a refresher in Atlas, the support page is where you'll go. We have a lot of videos that you can access, support videos or the quick guides if you just want quick little one page or PDFs to download, the quick guides are where to go. And then you'll also have access to our webinars so we have live webinars or webinars on demand. You can download and view at your convenience. These are all free for you to access. The Atlas training webinars under this webinars option uh, would be great places to go. The last thing I wanted to point out is this references tab. So under references, school references, this is where you'll go. Um, this is where a system admin can curate or maintain a resource page for all of your Atlas users. And what I've done here is in this April 11th, 2018, Navigating Atlas training header, I've uploaded the training slides from today, so you can download a PDF. Um, uh, that's the training slides here. And I've also embedded an Atlas training survey. If you have a few minutes today or tomorrow, um, I'd really appreciate it if you uh, fill, take the time to fill out the survey. I think there's only 10 questions. It shouldn't take you too long, but it'll just give us feedback on what we can do better. Um, and it'll also let us know if there's anything that we might have missed today. We'll send you uh, resources um, or guides based on the feedback we get from this survey. So if there are things that you still don't know, please go ahead and fill that out. Um, let us know how we're doing and how we can better support you all. Um, and I will also embed the uh, recording of this webinar, uh, this training here as well for you. Um, so keep an eye out for that. I know that we only have one minute left, but I wanted to at least give you some time to ask me any questions that you have today. Anything for now? There was under actions while ago, there was a pin to my Atlas. Where will that go to the opening page? So the question was a while back there was a Pin with an with an option under actions to pin to my atlas. So where does that go? Is that the home page? Yeah. 
Yeah, great question. So I've pinned my Stargirl, are you a snowflake unit to my Atlas? Again, that's actions pinned to my Atlas. And when I go to my Atlas dashboard now, um, I see my unit that I just pinned right here on the dashboard. So I can quickly you can just easily, click you can easily to it. pin the unit that you're currently working on then. Yeah, definitely. And it's a live look at the curriculum. So every time you click on it, it's always going to show you the most up to date information. Okay. Any other questions for now? I think we're I think we're good. I mean there's a lot of information in a short period of time, so uh, I'm sure that they'll follow up with questions or will let me know and I can convey to you, but we very much appreciate your time and your uh, willingness to condense that for us. Yeah, no problem. And again, feel free to fill out that survey. I appreciate it in advance. Um, thank you so much for joining this afternoon and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks, you too. All right, take care. Bye-bye.